<laughs> Welcome to another episode of Two Ales and Hockey Tales with Wally. And today, I'm so excited to have on a nosy 42-year-old from Elmira, Ontario, Canada. Her hockey journey has taken her to Canada, the USA, Germany, and Denmark. A staple and legend with the Woolwich Wild in hockey and ringette. She started winning at a young age in ringette with yours truly and has now transitioned to running amok in hockey. But she doesn't just play, she also manages the up-and-coming Shed Guys from Elmira, Ontario. And she even got hitched to a Shed Guy, Brother Scoot, episode 188. But she runs amok at more than just hockey and ringette. She also dominated the lanes with the Elmira Aqueducts, and she's the only other person I know to have a donkey and a goat as pets. <laughs> Welcome to Grandma's Cottage, Dana Weber. <laughs> well, thank you for having me. Yes, thanks for finally coming on. I get into how we know each other. I've been bugging you to do this for like years now. It's been years. And I've been I've... doing this for years. <laughs> you finally <laughs> bothered me so much that I caved. Mm. Mm-hmm. And, and, and you know how much fun Brother Scoot had, and he was nervous too, right? Just a shy he, Mennonite boy. He was really nervous, <laughs> and I'm really nervous. <laughs> and I find it really interesting that listening to me and Uncle Scoot talk has been listened to uh, just a shade under 500 listens now for Brother Scoot. And um, he had a budding hockey career too, as well as the Applejack, didn't he? He sure did, <laughs> yes. In his second year of organized hockey. Yes, and he was the mascot of the Elmira Sugar Kings when they stormed to the Sutherland Cup Championship, right? Yes, I used to go watch him when <laughs> he was just your friend. <laughs> and he would be dressed as a lion for the Sugar Kings. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess that's, why is the Sugar King a lion? We figured well, that out. there is no mascot anymore. I think that Scott was the first <laughs> and the last mascot. <laughs> well, they had an outfit and it was a lion. I'm thinking that's King of the Jungle as a lion, but... Uncle I don't Sco- think it's a thing anymore, though. <laughs> well, Uncle Scoot went out dressed as a lion, folks, with a, a flag. And there was a night in Stratford where he did offend some folks by pretending to pee on their logo at Center Ice, right? <laughs> yes. And he also would take the team towel and rub it between his legs. <laughs> that they got upset, folks. People got upset. They got mm. wound. Sorry about that. He was just having fun and hockey's supposed to be entertaining. And he was entertaining, right? <laughs> but that also might be why they don't have a mascot anymore. Well, I my I always say that winning is fun, but fun is fun, and teams that have the most fun win. And when your one of your best buddies is out there dressed like a lion, peeing on logos and wiping his butt with their towels, and then fighting the other team's mascot in the finals and winning that fight, folks, that's how you win championships. It takes everyone, right? That's right. Yes. <laughs> that's why I married him. Um, so I get into how we know each other as you are my sister, right? That's right. <laughs> yeah. Older and wiser. Um, and her son just came in, Rito. He wants to say hi. Come on in, big guy. How are you? Um, but yes, this is my sister and we're at Grandma's Cottage. And this is her son, Reed. Come on in and say hi to the folks. Say hi. 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 <laughs> it's just talking into my computer. Seriously. That's yeah. all we do. <laughs> So, Reed, this is a hockey podcast. Do you play hockey? Yeah. Yeah? You gotta talk louder, though. Yeah. Yeah? You like hockey? What's your favorite sport? Basketball. Basketball? <laughs> wow. Dude, that's new. We tried. He's played hockey since he was four, but now we're trying basketball. Hey, everybody's into different figure, stuff, uh, right? Yeah, gotta figure it out, but still doing hockey and basketball. Yeah. Right? So, what's your favorite meal, Reed? I like food. I like to talk about it on here. My favorite food? Yeah, you gotta talk louder though. Um, it is an egg sandwich from Tim Hortons. Egg sandwich. Not daddy's egg really? sandwich. You think Tim Hortons can do it better than at home? Yes. Mm. Yes. I like Tim Hortons food, but. Okay, well, I better get back into how me and Dana know each other. Um, I played ringette with you, didn't I? You did. <laughs> there was one year where we didn't... Have- Ran amok, folks. Dominated those gals. <laughs> yeah. There was one year where we didn't have enough players, right? So you stepped up. Yeah. Well, and it wasn't just me. It was small world, folks. It was also another shed guy, Ryan Benish, who came to the shed and became a professional lacrosse player. 
and we ran amok as the little brothers <laughs> team. Yeah, and then to the point where it actually got reviewed, right? Because they changed. The you rules. ended up yeah. being pretty good at ring it, and um, <laughs> we were winning all our games. And then it was a problem that there was yeah people don't like losing. They didn't want rep hockey players playing ring it. Ring it. <laughs> oh. Well, they needed people to step up, or there wasn't going to be a team, right? So my question would be: Is <laughs> what's harder to pick up, the puck or the ring? Oh, the ring. The ring yeah. is much tougher not, to stick your stick in there, right? It's not as easy as everyone thinks, Evan. Well, and then you, uh, people in the UK, I don't even know if they have ring at in the UK, right? So Oh, they it's all over the world, didn't you know? I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's all over. The, they have like... So, folks, ring at, if you don't know, you have to pass it over the blue lines. And way back when I made my debut in the sport, there were blue sticks, red sticks, and white sticks... And the red sticks had to stay defense all the time. And they couldn't even go in and muck it up and score goals. They had to stay back. But then those, I think it was the blue punks. They didn't even have to come no. back and play D-zone. Blue was forward and white was center. Right. Everybody wanted yeah. to be center. Everybody wanted to be white. But, like, you literally weren't allowed to, right? But then they changed that rule, too, didn't they? Yeah, now it's just three in the offensive zone. Right. And then you skate around in circles with the stick. On. Once you get your stick in that ring, you don't really give it up very often, do you? But you girls were really feisty. Do you remember the stick work? It was like a game of schlocky out there. <laughs> <laughs> we are definitely feisty and really good skaters. A lot of skill there. Yeah. No, but seriously, you guys had a squad, though. The the Woolwich girls your age. You had you, Amy Heckendorn, who then became a four. Well, all right. And uh, who else was there? You guys had a squad. Oh, we were we were pretty good. Yeah, and then then we and then you had a couple of young punks on the team, <laughs> Ryan Benish and me, and we were running amok, weren't we? Yeah, we still, <laughs> we still played up until COVID. We were the the legends. That's cool. Legends. You guys actually still yeah. played, eh? Yeah, up till COVID. Hmm. Now yeah. we've transitioned into was the uh, stick were just as feisty. <laughs> Oh gosh, yes. Yeah, I, competing yes. is fun, isn't it? Yes. It's like it's like when someone takes your puck, right? If they take your ring and you had your stick in that ring, you get right wound up, don't you? Yes. <laughs> Nobody that's takes your ring, all, does that's do that? What they? it's all about, right? <laughs> You're gonna let them take your ring. No, you wouldn't no. let them take your ring. Competing is fun, no. folks. That's yeah. that's that's what we're about. <laughs> yeah. Um, and before I forget, because I always do. I'm having a raffle at aleshockeytails.com to raise money for Rich Bateman's recovery from a massive stroke. And you get to win a two ales and hockey tails jersey, folks. And not many people in the world have one of those. And the other half of the money is going to sponsor the captain of the Manchester Storm that started the chocolate storm. Now that they throw chocolate on the ice in Manchester. Did you know about that? I didn't. But I, I also do know that I'd be wearing a two ales and hockey t-shirt but i'm the only one in my family that hasn't got one. Oh dear <laughs> oh dear i didn't know i actually don't have any no, I, i'm just kidding oh no that hurt i'm sorry i'll get you one okay actually i think i have a mug at my house give you one of those okay <laughs> <laughs> but yeah fun is fun folks and uh, it is fun making shirts and stuff but you need money to do that right <laughs> Yeah, go to the shirt. Uh, I'll give you a shirt, okay? Mm-hmm. Other ways we know each other, we did have a goat and a donkey, didn't we? <laughs> and people wonder why I'm such a donkey. Well, they say you're like the people you surround yourself with, and we had a donkey as a pet, didn't we? <laughs> Esau. Esau. Yeah. And um, one time, pa- Papa, our old man, episode 99, Ronald Walton, did lose his donkey, didn't he? <laughs> Yes. Do you remember that? There was a newspaper article about how Ron Walton yes, had exactly, lost yes. his ass. Yes. <laughs> yes, he did lose his donkey. Yeah. Well, can be easy to misplace, I guess, because they did used to put him in the back of our car in the back seat, right? <laughs> yeah, they took the back seat out. <laughs> and then you'd be driving down the road and there's your donkey. Put the donkey in the back seat and people wonder why I'm so weird. <laughs> his head was sticking out the back window. <laughs> Most people have a dog's head sticking out the window, folks. The Waltons had a donkey's. <laughs> yes. I wish I remembered Esau. I was too young, though, right? Oh, really? I think so. Yeah. I just saw the pictures of Esau, mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> it's pretty cool. And we had Gladys the goat, right? We did, yes. yes. And I would like to get a goat. Yeah, again. <laughs> you actually want to go like, yeah, we were talking about it with you kids. have become a bit of a farmer eh yeah well, we, <laughs> you we, got chickens and what'd you 
what else have you had? Didn't well, the kids get salmonella because they were holding ducks or yeah, something? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was kind of a COVID thing. So there was nothing else to do. Couldn't go anywhere. So we had, we hatched chickens. We hatched ducks. But yes, we don't have ducks anymore because Reed got salmonella. <laughs> <laughs> um everybody needed to keep themselves entertained during all the baloney i hatched a podcast right <laughs> right right yeah you gotta yes. stay entertained folks yeah we had a lot of fun with the chickens right until you didn't <laughs> well the ducks that was another story the oh the ducks sorry the ducks yeah uh but you have you've always uh liked having animals haven't you yeah. we had some bunnies when we were kids we had rabbits too during covid we had rabbits and ducks and chickens <laughs> <laughs> when we were in online school um cash's class thought he lived on a farm <laughs> but we don't well, buddy no it's quite the shack actually brother scoop built that one it's quite the spot right there at the edge of elmira right um so anywho um what else do you want to talk about today um we are at grandma's cottage and everybody takes turn cooking meals and everybody knows how much I like food. So, Dana, what's your meal going to be when you and Brother Scoot make it this week? Well, we made it last night. Right. What did we do again? Zipper sticks from Stemler's Meats in Heidelberg. Free ads, folks. Stemler's Meats yeah. in Heidelberg. They're running amok in the sausage game. That thing was cool. So it's, it's a, like a kebab, right? Um, but it was a piece of sausage that went zigzag down the stick. With some bacon, yeah. peppers, right? Yeah, zipper stick. Zipper stick, folks. Get into it. Really good. Good sausage out there in Stemmers, right? Okay. Other ways we know each other is Papa's been to the shed before, or <laughs> right, on the pod, episode 99, and that's our father. And Nana, our mother, is mm-hmm. still too scared, isn't she? She is really scared. She just told me that I was doing this for her as well. <laughs> She's not coming. And And you were quite nervous too, weren't you? Still am a little bit, yeah. Um, so you shouldn't be. I'll try and make you comfortable. <laughs> um, I also there's uh my biggest fan is as what he calls himself, also wants to come on and um a guy that they run a mental health thing in Sheffield, England, one of my honey holes, and they're gonna come on and talk about men's mental health, and that should be a wild episode. And he's really nervous too. He said he's gonna sh- he feels like he's going to shit himself. You know, yeah, you don't yeah. feel like that, do you? Well, no. no That's but, good. That's good. Yeah, I can understand <laughs> how he's feeling. Uh, so I usually get into the poster picks. We haven't done that yet because we are at the cottage and rumor has it Papa's got a hard drive with some good old photos of us as kids and stuff. So we should probably make this poster epic. eh? Oh, yeah. yeah. It'll be a good one. And we will put on the picture mm-hmm. of Daryl's our favorite store in the world, the random store, as we call it. And that's an antique store around the corner that it's our honey hole, isn't it? We go there for fun. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It's a lot of fun. It really is. Antiquing is fun folks. And if you've never tried it, you should, you should find your Daryl because he's awesome. The (laughs) the musical instruments are the best though. I like the helmets. So, um, Oh, the best part was the helmet that I was wearing in that picture. Yes, in it, that, and it then, became the player of the game for your minor hockey team, didn't then it? Then Scott came and bought it, not knowing that I wore it mm-hmm. that day. And then it was the player of the game helmet all last year for the U8. Well, it's Which wild, is wild, folks. Wild cats. Oh, wild cats. Yes. So they're just wild. Good. The girls are the wild and the boys are the wild cats. That seems backwards yeah. to me. <laughs> well, a little bit. But the, yeah. the, the kids would sleep in it and everything it was a, it was a highlight um yeah and also how we know each other is you were nice enough to gift the sombrero that my girls mm-hmm. wore as player of the game this season um that was at the walton gift exchange right the useless gift that was not a useless gift at all was it no i worked really hard to get that in the gift exchange Yes, and really hard. But then I gave it right to Zoe for her hockey team, and it was awesome. And girls even slept in their sombrero when they became player of the game, right? And you'd be mm-hmm. happy to know that your niece was the player of the game the last game of the season when we won the championship. She's a real gamer and won the sombrero the last game of the year, so we got to take it home. <laughs> right, sounds good. Yeah. I remember coming to watch her game in Orangeville. Yes, I have that written down. How we? Yeah, I yeah, said you we... came to watch my gals play. What a squad! Eh? Well, we left Reed's hockey game and. Um... Newmarket, and we were driving through Orangeville right when Zoe's game was starting. 
So we and you guys you got over there and it's isn't it fun watching minor hockey when you know the kids? I get right into it. Oh well, yes, I spend a lot of time watching minor hockey <laughs> every day. Actually, <laughs> well, you do have you have three boys in it, right? Yeah, that's a lot of time at the rink, isn't it? It's a lot of time at the rink. It's, and I, it's hard when they all three have a game at the same time in different places. That gets tricky. And it gets tricky, but it also sucks, right? Because you want to be there watching. Like, that's my favorite entertainment is watching the yeah. kids play sports. Yeah, I do love watching that. Yeah. I love watching this Ripley baseball team that we're going to go watch tomorrow night, folks. We got a bunch of shed guys. And I tell you, the Ripley community is one of my favorites in the world. Um, they have a squad of shed guys. And um, watching kids you've coached and know play a sport together and be a team and be friends is really fulfilling. You know, when you yeah. see all the kids become friends, it's mm-hmm. fun, isn't it? It is fun. Yeah. Yeah. We just did a dunk really tank. Connect. We just did a dunk tank on Saturday. I got dunked a whole bunch by the little punks, you know, but fun is fun, right? <laughs> yes. I've never been in a dunk tank, but yes. I had fun. never been in a dunk tank either. I never, I always wondered what would make those crazy people get up there. And then I realized that fun is fun mm-hmm. and um, the kids had fun. So I got in there, but the actual deal was I told the coach, if I didn't knock him off, I would get in and a deal's a deal. I missed. I got to be better. You got to play better to win. I missed. I had to get in the dunk tank, right? Yeah, you don't want to come second, right? Yeah. Second sucks. Yeah. Well, anything but winning sucks actually mm-hmm. right very true mm-hmm. other ways we know each other is i said your hockey journey has taken you to canada the usa germany and denmark so you did go to all those places right you went to kalamazoo when i was at western michigan i went a lot it, it was, was fun lot, wasn't it a lot of fun i had it written down which place was the most fun i it's got to be western michigan right 100 percent western michigan because you're not professionals folks you're just college athletes Yes. Right. And yeah. I was fulfilling a college life I didn't have, I guess, at your college. Well, <laughs> and it, is it not interesting how the U.S. schools are different than Canadian schools? Way different. Way oh, more fun. A lot more school spirit, you could call it. Yeah. <laughs> school came second. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was so much fun yeah. being had. And one of the memories that came up to me, Dana. I, I know what you're going to say, I think. Did you play beer pong yes. with a hockey helmet on with Chris Frank? I did. Shed guy? I knew you were going to say that. I actually knew that. Oh, uh, well, you know, I've worn hockey helmets um, to stay safe outside of <laughs> hockey as well. Mm-hmm. And, uh, well, beer pong was just uh, was just getting going back then, right? And it was a pretty exciting game, wasn't it? I would it? have to say that I won. <laughs> I think I won. When I saw Frank the Tank, who was a Western Michigan superstar as a freshman, playing beer pong with my sister wearing a hockey helmet, that just fills your heart with joy, right? <laughs> I think they beat him, don't you think? I honestly don't recall, but... Um, well, I do recall I was supposed to go to Chicago with you and Lisa the next day, and I did not go. Did I go? Yes. Really? We she was she was in, she moved it, there. It doesn't matter, but she's yes. an internship or something. Yeah, we were she going moved to check there. things out. And right. I was supposed to go. And I'd never been to Chicago and I really wanted to, but I did not go. Well, it was an interesting apartment we lived in, wasn't it? Oh, yes. Really dirty, right? Very, very dirty. Oh <laughs> my gosh. When I think I would stay there and our parents would stay in a hotel and I was having a shower. <laughs> And the water in the shower was about a foot deep and there was <laughs> underwear floating around my ankles. <laughs> and it was the other sisters on the team were wondering how I stayed there. They right. didn't understand it. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, it wasn't. <laughs> but I pulled it together and I did it and it was really terrible. Um. Yeah. So when you look at social media stuff, sometimes I've seen things posted of college hockey players apartments and how disgusting they are well folks i'm pretty sure we were the biggest legends there were <laughs> no i actually, actually would probably win that one it was awesome. our our so stretch and i lived on one side and had our own bathroom and then daryl and yachts were on the other side and for the last half of the season i'd say the shower didn't drain the toilet seat was broken um i pretty yeah there might have been a a light that had broken and 
just never, never cleaned up. Never got cleaned never. up. <laughs> no. Well, until you got to move out. But we got our deposit back. And what's interesting about getting our deposit well, back. Well, that's winning. Right? <laughs> Winning's fun. But we had a hole from our apartment to the next door neighbors by the end. And that happened, folks, while I went to the AHL. I, that wasn't on my clock. I, You know, I was off trying to be a professional. And they made a hole from one apartment to the other. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah, they did. Yeah, I think I so. That. Yeah, it was it got a bit carried away there when senior year ended. It it's a lot of fun though. <laughs> it was a lot of fun, and you know what? A, a small world is. You came down there with Ken Dunn, who for the friends of the show fought John Scott in the Southern Cup Finals, and we won the championship. No big deal. And he was like a rookie. And then uh, Andrew Lackner also came to Western Michigan for a, a summer visit, right when we weren't in hockey season. And then you get to the pools and you get a keg at a pool and you get bean bags playing. That's pretty fun, right? Well, Amy and I drove Voter. following yep. Andrew and Ken, and we were in a tornado. We had actually had to pull over. We were in a full blown tornado. And did you not get lost? Did so- yeah, we got lost. We were in a tornado. It was a pretty awful drive. Right. And then that's when. And then when we had fun when you got there. <laughs> well, a lot of fun. Yeah. A lot of yeah. fun. A lot of fun. And the trip to Denmark, not so much fun. You went to come visit us in beautiful Voyens, Denmark, right? I don't think I went back to Europe after that trip. Wasn't a good <laughs> one, folks. Uh, you came with Reed, who we all just met. At, he was 10 um, months old. And Colby was just a little bit older than him. Six weeks. And, um, Everybody got sick that week. Um, Everybody ev- but like us. Like projectile vomiting all over the apartment. Everywhere. Mm-hmm. My parents were there, right? Reed, Dana, and um, Colby, Lisa. Everybody was projectile vomiting around the apartment. And I, for some reason, never got sick and just Reed went and out I and never, played my matches. Reed right? and I never got sick. It was more Colby. And then Lisa trying to talk to the German hospital trying to figure out what was wrong or what to do exciting stuff couldn't speak or not denmark german Den- we danish not danish not german danish folks yeah. um but you also came to germany and that was back when scoot was my friend and your husband came and you guys came on a trip to Landshut, germany my first year in germany you guys made the effort to come over and that was a time eh he came with my old boyfriend <laughs> yeah <laughs> and and Chauncey. and coco yeah yeah what a legend Chauncey is um what a what a what a trip that was and what i recall of it um folks you can judge me if you want my career is over and i don't care we you guys showed up and i was really excited my <laughs> friends from home came over and saw me and lisa over in my suit <laughs> And we played some cards that night, right? Um, and we had a few drinks. And then I remember when we decided, yep, yeah, no, Brent's got to play tomorrow. It's bedtime, right? And then I did go to bed and we ran amok the next day. One seven to one, right? Was that that? We went skiing, though. When was we the skiing? did. The skiing went. We, I, so want, I had to play one saying. game before we went skiing. They okay. showed up. And saw one game, and I, you know, the night before, just got a little bit carried well, away. The, fun, the best part was <laughs> about the skiing was before we packed to come, um, Brent said that uh, you could rent snow pants in Germany. He said you could rent snow pants. You can't rent snow pants at the <laughs> at the ski hill. So we all had to ski in our jeans. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have to but um mennonite skiing and jeans is one of the most fulfilling things you'll ever see you know uncle scoot ripping down the, hill blue the top jeans. <laughs> really high like not just a mountain what was it like an elf yeah well, there, was there were in, like real uh, mountains he was over there blue jeans blue and it was jeans. actually his first time ever skiing in his entire life <laughs> no way yes <laughs> yeah first do you remember skiing. the t-bar incident <laughs> yes we've talked about it a lot and it was really really great it was folks for to see a beautiful mess when you have skied before and then you bring people that have never skied to germany to well do their it. t-bars are different now you stand on a, a t-bar a, is a t-bar like it, now in ontario the, the no. three-year-olds could do it the three-year-olds were going up the hill no problem at all but now you don't have t-bars you stand on a mat that rolls you up well that sounds like everything's just yeah too easy now yeah so making we, it too easy for the, these kids these, the next generation these is so t-bars soft t-bars were really hard and i remember <laughs> shotzi telling me to hang on for dear life and i did not let go 
I remember. I so you could even go, you had skied bar. before. I, I was, well, the T bars. I hadn't been on a T bar. I was on a chairlift. And so, folks, bar. just so we can picture this, okay? This is the baby hill, the bunny hill, as you'd call it. And there's a whole bunch of four and five year old little German kids going up the T bars, no yeah. problem. And then <laughs> the folks from Elmira, Ontario, Canada show up who don't have mountains. And then, um, well, let's say there was some spills on the way up the hill and Dana's hanging on <laughs> for dear life. Shauncey's cheering her on. I just... Scoots off in a ditch. <laughs> it was it was a bloodbath. <laughs> I just remember him saying, just hang on for dear life. Don't you let go. Don't you let go. And I didn't let go. I, you I, didn't I, let go. Competing's I, fun, folks. She got up. I made top. it to the top. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we only did like one run, and then it was like that's uh, enough. No, eh? we did we did a lot, and that that's when Scott went right up to the top, and he never skied before. Right, he he's just an top, athlete, folks. It's like man. starting hockey when well, you're 17 and playing junior. Right? Yeah, well, <laughs> that's a thing, right? You have to wait to play hockey till you get your driver's license, and then you, uh, <laughs> yeah, when you get your driver's license, you start playing hockey, and then. <laughs> Then you make the Wolves the Apple Jacks your second year. Right. And, and well, and that's kind of like being a mascot. Kind of like being a pole vaulter. He is, yeah. There's not many did pole vaulters. Oh, of course we did. There's not yeah. many pole vaulters come to the shed, folks. And Uncle Scoot is, he was world, well, he was good in Ontario for pole vaulting. Well, he went to offset, but it's not often that your uh, high school teacher drives you to Sudbury to pole vault with holding onto the pole on top of your car and then sharing a hotel room. <laughs> you, it, usually that nowadays no. nowadays i don't think you share hotel rooms with your high school teacher i don't think so I, not I, one-on-one folks no not no, no. I don't you don't happens. do that game back on <laughs> <laughs> um okay i don't know where we're at what we were talking about we'll just move on um other ways we know each other just saw you at a spring hockey tournament isn't it a small world when we're at the same spring hockey tournaments and yeah. you got, um, well, my nephew, Cash is money, um, is playing some triple A, isn't he? He is, yes. They were in the Niagara Battle Tournament when Colby was there. Yes. So we Exciting went, times. Uh, went and watched Colby play a couple games, and the uh, Tri City Kings came out on top. Niagara go go Tri City Kings, right? Niagara Battle Champions. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think we lost in the finals that one, right? I think so. We missed the final game, but we saw some other ways. It's like uh, winning's the opposite of losing, folks. Losing sucks, and then your kid breaks a stick at the end of the game, and then you snap. Oh, you know what? We went to Did Colby's you know games, that? and he was pretty feisty. He is feisty. That's. He, I like it. I like. I it. I don't. I don't tell him not to be. <laughs> when, he hit, when he hit that guy in front of us, and uh, he knocked him into the boards, and he's the smallest. Way smaller than the guy you hit. Right. And then he looked at me and nodded. <laughs> and I was in the and corner. You, you know what's funny is he always pretends he didn't mean to hit the guy. Oh, Every he time it. he crushes a kid, he pretends like he didn't mean to. And then when he gets penalties or say even kicked out of a game, he looks like, oh my gosh, what happened? And then he like, he's like almost on, like, I can't believe that you think I meant to do that on purpose. Colby, I've been watching you do it. You are hammering kids, <laughs> you know? He looked You're not allowed to hit. Nodded, like, I just destroyed that guy. Right. It's <laughs> kind of like and when kind of like when you go to proud. Niagara University with Western Michigan and you play your best buddy from home, Andrew Lackner, and you get Scott Weber and Brad Schantz, the fellows we talked about that came to Germany with Dana Rue, we're standing in the corner and Andrew and I went for a puck at the same time. And he thought he was going to hit me wrong. Biggest body check in his career confirmed in episode 43, folks. Yeah. I hammered him, hammered him. And it is fun hitting your friends hard, but Colby needs to stop. You're not allowed to hit yet, right? Yeah. Cash actually played at the Purple Eagles arena. And, uh, and we, Cash is quite feisty as well. We had a nice... Uh, we had a nice uh, picture for Andrew in front of the purple, purple Eagles. Purple Eagles logo. Yeah, but no, he is he is uh, he is quite feisty. And small world, Barrett Eggett's is Jersey is like retired, and he's like a legend there. And he is from Concordon, and also lived with us, right? <laughs> well, he did live with us. Yeah, when he playoff got, drive. He, we don't need to talk about why, but yeah, well, playoff drive. He got kicked out of his billets, <laughs> so we took him in. 
<laughs> people helping people, yeah. folks. It's a powerful thing, right? Billets, it's an interesting world, that billet life. So you're not thinking of bringing in any Elmira Sugar Kings? <laughs> you know, I actually saw the posts. I follow the Elmira Sugar Kings. My kids are big fans. Yes, they we are. We read uh, Scott Basler's book. Uh, what's it? Mm. 50, once a king once a king always get 50 king, or the something. top 50th like, anniversary i'm in that book folks there's like yeah. a thing in a real book yeah no right? we actually um read that book for bedtime stories oh that's cool. and they pick who scott their... scott who also came to the shed will love to hear that right well they yeah they they actually pick each night who they want to read about but that's cool um yeah. the sugar kings we, we had a thing right the shed um, they donated a jersey for me to raffle, which ended up being won in Sheffield, England, which is pretty cool. That someone's Sarah Curse, who also has a two L's and hockey tails tattoo, is rocking a Sugar she King's has a jersey. Tattoo and I don't know a T-shirt. Well, I did. <laughs> I didn't kidding. give her the tattoo. She gave that to herself, right? <laughs> She's winning. Jeez, you must really want a shirt. I think I still have one hung yeah, up in the I, shed. I don't want a shirt. I can tell you do. Um, <laughs> what are we talking about now? The Sugar King. So we did a raffle and made money for Shed Guy Kyle Rank's thing, the Friends of Hockey, right? And yeah. um, and we made money and went out on the ice with your kids and my kids and donated money to Friends of Hockey. You know, that was a highlight for my kids because they're really big Sugar King fans. They knew all of them. We were at every game <laughs> and they were big Sugar Kings fans. And they, so for them to do that, that was actually before they were that big of fans. That was a year before, but it was, uh, it's uh, pretty exciting when yeah. uh, you can, when you get to do that with your kids and your nephews. And we got a tour of the locker room. Thank you, Scott Baszler, yeah. shed guy. I don't know what episode number you were, but you've been to the shed. All right. And your little brother, Kevy, is going to come on. You know, it's really funny, though, that they don't understand that you actually played for the Sugar Kings and they think it's no big deal. And they just like the Sugar Kings that are out there at the moment. They don't understand <laughs> that you what you did. <laughs> well, we did have a good yes. career there in Elmira. They um, read your story in the book. but That's good. Yeah. Um, what sucked <laughs> is losing game seven of the finals. That sucked um, the second year. The first year we won it all, and we still have a group chat twenty did, years later. And um, did the you next have post in the final game or something. Mm-hmm. You, we read you that? would bring that up, right? We, I think I read that in the yeah. Scott Bezos so book. it was uh, a face off in the ozone game seven, down two to one mm-hmm. with like a minute left against Cernia. We take a timeout, drop a play, they win it back to me. And I threw my tits into it and hit the crossbar. Mm -hmm. And then that puck that hit the crossbar flew all the way out towards the blue line. And a guy went down on the empty net and scored to seal it. And uh, winning is the opposite of losing. Losing is horrible. And then we take a bus all the way back to Elmira, Ontario. Sorry to bring this up, man. I'm so upset about it still. We take a bus (laughs) all the way back to Elmira, Ontario. I have ran amok all season. I have been drinking underage in the bars for years. And the Central Tavern decides the night we lose game seven is the night they're not going to serve me. That was a roadhouse. Your Nate, your picture. It was the Central Tavern at the the, when we lost in game seven, we went to the Central Tavern. The bus came all the way back to Sarnia, and I am so pissed off. And then they decide that's the night I am officially underage. Well, I've been underage for years, right? (laughs) Well, it was the Cherry Cup when you lost that. Your, your picture went up on the wall of the Roadhouse Tavern. Mm. Is it the Roadhouse Tavern? Well, that's because um, I <laughs> pretended to be Brian Clemmer. Um, I used his ID, who's a shed guy, and our sons have now become friends and was my first enforcer that protected me in hockey. And uh, people don't forget stuff like that. And I tried to use his ID, and the waitress uh, said, I know who Brian Clemmer is. That's not you, right? And then it became a thing. It was a problem, right? Yeah. Yeah. And we're back. Oh, we got a dog here too now. Yeah. Here we go. Uh so I don't know where we're at again. Scoot, your husband just had a rager of a 40th birthday party, didn't he? He did. Yes. It was a lot of fun. I'm not sure. Keep where, talking. Where yeah, the birthday party was awesome good live music <laughs> um, 
and uh that see, would be, she's that a would, natural that folks. see be, now uh, now she's now she's relaxed and in yeah, the shed that saloon slave right um uh, so saloon slave so um perry martin who uh, let me tell you folks is competitive as they get i've played ball hockey against him what an animal and he also was a wesley applejack yeah, well, he mucks it up. I've never, I've never played ball hockey against such a competitor. He was right into her, you know. Him and his band um, came up and rocked it. And you know what's funny with the small world is, one of his band members um, was a billet for the Sugar Thangs uh, with Nigel Hope and Jeff Van Eyen. Who's that? The Martins. Like OJ. Yeah. 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 No, it was, uh, it was a good party. And I mean, like they probably even covered for Van Nyenat when he was I stealing act- the roadhouse door. That would I serve actually, me anymore, uh, right? So it got somehow <laughs> roped into uh, singing <laughs> patience with uh, with the band. With the band, night. yes. I it was. Uh, band. I mean, for fortieth birthday parties, um, I would say doing epic shit, as Mike will put it, is fun. And uh, that was an epic 40th birthday party, wasn't it? Yeah, you only turned 40 once, right? And people came, people made the effort, folks. It was like when I did the golf tournament, people came from all over to come. It was like when Scoot was having the 40th, there were people came from all over for that thing, wasn't there? There was, and it, it turned out good. Where my 40th was And that Jerry, brisket. Cool, Ooh. Cool. yeah. Brisket. Jerry, Jerry. I've, had a, I've had multiple people asking for his name since then well that was the best brisket mm-hmm. i've ate so why don't you give out a free ad who made that uh jerry weidman and dorking i don't think it's like it's on the store dorking it's on Jerry, a, folks it's a uh garage it's a guy yeah it's a guy it's a guy that knows how to brisket yeah. right yeah that was but my you, you know why hot and bothered folks when eating food can get you aroused like that, that's when you know you're living, right? But his 40th birthday turned out really great. Mine happened. I was supposed to go to Nashville. Oh, and yeah. I ended oh, up. Only. I ended up uh, in COVID. Yeah. And didn't go. But my friends did bring Nashville to me. How was that? So we were in my friend's basement. And it's she's out in the country. It's pretty awesome. She had lights strung, bras hanging from the lights. Scott brought big barrels with beer on the the barrels and all that. And it was like, actually, you were in Nashville. Well, that's cool. But... It was, it turned out pretty good. Yeah. So but I still, still need you, to go. Right. Um, yeah, Nashville, bring insane. that up, eh? So Nashville is a place that probably should go. Um, and I know a fellow that just signed there for the next four seasons um, mm-hmm. that I've been working with on the ice. And um your your son cash there's a good little player and we've discussed that uh next time i go help ryan o'reilly that uh we just may let cash tag along and come skate with us right well you said last night that um it's gonna happen so i'm gonna hold you to that but um yeah that i i usually try to be a man of my word right so i I did (laughs) ask him the other night who his favorite uh nhl players were and Ryan O'Reilly was number four. So that's, that's pretty, pretty good, folks. That's, that's out pretty of the big. whole world, right? There's a lot of NHL players, and that's... Well, he's that's number four. one for me. He is my favorite player. Um, What he's done for Colby, what he's done for a couple of his buddies that got to go out and skate, Um, I just am so appreciative of how good of a dude he is. And um, he's the type of superstar you want around the game, you know? Well, you know... Number four is going to go to number one after he has this experience. Right. And then we are going to make this happen, folks. Whether he wants me there or not, I'm coming. Yeah. His, equipment, <laughs> his equipment's in the trailer. It's going. Uh, but no, it's been uh, it's been as exciting as it gets for me, too, because um, there's people you play hockey with and you get on the ice with them and you're just like, holy moly, this guy is way better than me. And that happened way back in 2014, 15, when I started skating with him. And I thought, this guy is incredible. And you I've never skated s- with him back then. When I first moved to Concordia, I went to the YMCA in Godrich, Ontario, at six a.m. to skate by myself because that was the only time there's free ice to skate. And I went out there and I was mucking it up by myself. And then I see a bunch of professional hockey players come on the ice after, and uh, I said, "Can I please skate with you guys?" And then I did. And then they realized like I was a bit out of shape and I was a bit fat, but that I could play. And then they let me come every day. We got to keep our equipment in the locker room. And I felt like a pro in the summer. And it was pretty cool. And then when I saw a guy train as hard as he did in the summer, 
And I saw how hard he worked every drill with no coaches around, nobody telling him to do it. It was uh, it was a game changer to see it because he gives her, and I'm a big fan. You know, well, yeah, you got to practice, right? Yeah. He started this. Uh, it was a drill. <laughs> Can you what? Pause. What are you talking you... about? Are you nervous now? What do you got to do? Pee? <laughs> what are you doing? You got to rewind it. I can't rewind it. Keep going. Okay. So <laughs> it's next, friend. Stop. Okay. Sorry, but we are going to get cash to Goddard awesome. and we yes. are going to do it. Yeah. Totally. Um, but uh, Ryan O'Reilly is one of the biggest dandies out there. And when I got to go out there and work with him one on one and uh, put pucks where he needed to, and I, I felt like I was actually helping him. It was a pretty neat experience mm-hmm. as a aspiring under 13 coach, right? Yeah. So this will be exciting for cash. It'll be a surprise. And it's he doesn't pretty... know what's happening. Ha ha. <laughs> it is going to happen though. Cause if I put yeah. this out there and it doesn't happen, that's on me. And then I'm not a man on my word. We right? should rewind the last little bit though, right? No. I don't know what happened. Anyways. So where <laughs> and what are you doing now? You can't rewind. You got to keep going forward in life, Dana. Oh, that's right. That's right. No, we're not where talking. and what are no you doing blind. now? Oh, so what else are we gonna talk about? Where and what are you doing now? Ugly sweaters. Why are you looking at my notes? You're not gonna see my notes. notes. Ugly sweater. So that is about we grew up coming to Concord in the summers. Yes. Do you recall the night Andrew Lochner, Scott Weaver, and myself mm-hmm. hit the town in ugly sweaters? Yes. It and I do have a picture of that that we could put on the uh you have a picture of us in those sweaters oh gosh yeah that's fun that's I really fun. i don't think it's on my phone right? yeah at home. so this poster pick may take a while to come out folks but when it does it's going to be something right <laughs> yeah like you you stopped at a garage sale on your way up and bought knitted sweaters with like well fun is fun <laughs> and, care bears on them. and then you wore them out that night to the bar right when king Carden was uh, john's that yeah was the it was a uh, hop happening spot yeah. back in the day right yes and that's running amok when you show up and ugly Christmas sweaters. And you know what's interesting? They weren't Christmas sweaters. Totally. Sorry, they were, they were knitted sweaters. Yeah, you're right. No, there was. They weren't all Christmas. They were just sweaters, and they were fantastic. They were one of a kind. They're actually something that needs to be seen. You're right. I agree. We need to yeah. get those pictures out there because I don't care what people think of me anymore, and I didn't care back then, and I still don't. I do have pictures of that though. <laughs> well, that was really fun, and I remember showing up to watch. Our friends Pugs, um, Jamie Swatsy, Shed Guy, and Big Joe play baseball or something. And we showed up in those sweaters and we had frogs and turtles. Do you remember we that? We played Black Horse. Yeah. I almost got a hole in one. <laughs> That's what you, you remember? remember? Yeah. I remember showing up at the slow pitch tournament with oh, frogs and turtles I, and I, those sweaters on. And people are like, what are, they, what are these no, people I placed, doing? I placed it three inches from the cup. Uh, and then we did go and watch them play. Well, what's interesting um, mm-hmm. for me is <clears throat> King Carden used to be our vacation spot where nobody knew who we were and you could do whatever you want and you could run amok. And now I come here and, well, I know most of the people here now, right? So <laughs> we're on vacation and you're not. Yeah. But, um, you know, if you don't care what people think, you can be yourself all the time, right? Right. Yeah. But it's different when you're on vacation, but you're not on vacation, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm on vacation (laughs) (laughs) and you're not right. So anyways, we've had a lot of memories in this cottage, haven't we? So shout out to you, Gigi way to go. Right. Keep running them up. Right. Yeah. It is quite the cottage. Thanks to Gigi. It really is quite the cottage folks. Just so you know, and Concarden's quite the spot. Um, Anywho, moving on around here in Concarden, you have been to it. 2018 i was there you got to do one when i went to germany and run around a track in 2008 the shirt tail parades the old boys aren't they something oh that's an experience that doesn't happen very often oh every 10 years folks and you should never miss one. i still remember not knowing where mom and dad were and they i we went around the corner and i was sitting at the front with the band in the ripley shirt tail parade oh this is a different one i oh, i was in the ripley one and I was sitting at the Ripley's front. a good community too. They know how to have fun there too, folks. Yeah, they 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 offset the uh, King Carden one, right? Well, King Carden's a big one. It's, it's, I think it, their Ripley one was better. Cause is that right? Hey, holy moly! There's a bit of a rivalry around here. So you, 
I tell you, the concurrent folks that are going to listen to this, oh, they might be upset. I actually, I really like the Ripley one, but I do remember sitting at the front with the band. Well, when you do memorable stuff, then you remember it more, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Those sure tell parades, though, folks, is the whole town gets dressed up however they gosh darn want. It's not Halloween, but it is Halloween. And then you all walk down the road to wherever the party is going to be. And then there's a live band or a concert, I guess. And everybody in town is dressed completely inappropriate and having a time, right? Well, I think that I have a really good picture I could put of Lisa and I at the the King Carden Church Hill Parade a long time ago. And that would have been when I'm in Germany. Yeah, you missed it. You missed it. Yeah, thanks for making me run around the track, guys. Not a runner. Yeah. You know, well, remember when you had shin splints and you had to, oh, we were here yeah. and you had to bath in a ice cube. I used to exercise. I've given it up, but I used to. You do used to. A lot. Like so much that you yeah. had to have an ice bath. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, see, folks, I did used it, to work it out. It did happen. Nobody pays me to work out anymore. At so least I least gave it, it up. Happened. It did happen. Well, you want to be good at what you're doing, right? So yeah. now you can look you at, now you, now you can look at the notes. So the next one is ketchup and mustard speech. Do you remember that when I nailed that? <laughs> that was when you married Uncle Scoot. And I, I said, you, I always had ketchup in one hand and mustard in the other. And I never realized how good they were together. <laughs> but your notes were, um, was it <laughs> peanut butter and jelly? And oh, then it switched to ketchup and mustard. Sure, your, your note, peanut butter and jelly is good. Your note before you did the speech was ketchup, <laughs> mustard. <laughs> or peanut butter and jelly and that was in super sun and that was it super sun so he is the super sun folks it's Mm -hmm. come up lots it was part of my speech um when a young man starts um he doesn't want to come second he he wants to win he does and he does win um he's pretty good at what he does in all aspects um (laughs) he he would be well he'd be cleaning things up he'd be doing all things that i should have been doing as a son and then all of a sudden the super son shows up and starts doing everything bigger and better than me right yeah he did mm. made so me look does. bad Still does. it's yeah. not good to, <laughs> it's not good to look bad folks um but he likes to do epic stuff and you know what was mm. else was epic was when he built a the bat backstop for pitcher batter catcher out oh. of kicking wire yes do you know that that trophy for pitcher batter catcher and champion of the night champion of champion the of the night it's wow still in my garage champion of the night has never been brought up i don't think on uh, this and that was a trophy to win wasn't it yes. trophies are fun to win i just brought that up today trophies are really fun right they're really fun so champion of the night i'll let you explain <laughs> how that got won well i don't know when it started but champ- girls weren't allowed to win it but i remember one girl that won it well won if you got to do epic stuff to win champion of the night but basically when we were geez we we weren't grown up yet folks we were younger right yeah um we I were having fun and point. enjoying life whoever had the most fun and made the night the most epic we had a vote the next morning of who won champion of the night right yeah <laughs> And it was a trophy, or was was it a necklace? It was a necklace with the top of a trophy hanging from it. Yeah, and And you wear that the next day because you had been the champion of the night. But then everybody else is competing to win that the next day. You (laughs) you were competing to be the the champion of the name, right? And um, maybe not something that we'd be proud of at this age. I don't think, like when you think about marital stuff. I don't think wives would, were, would be impressed if you won champion of the night because you had to really play hard to win champion of the night, right? Well, and sometimes people can frown upon that wives. behavior. We didn't have husbands and wives back then. No, so, so. you could just do whatever, right? Yeah. Just have fun. <laughs> now things... Well, uh, we're grown up now. Yeah, well... Yeah, we, we don't have a trophy for no, having the most fun no. anymore, but... You know what? I won it a couple times and I was pretty proud of it. <laughs> I never won it. <laughs> never. <laughs> so here's the next question. True or I guess that's a good thing now. True or false. Does your husband have 100 first cousins? I think there's over 103 for sure. <laughs> I know there was 103 at one point. He told me that's breeding folks. Now there's probably more. <laughs> 
Um, so you have married a, a fella that uh, has Mennonite background. So you've been to family reunions. Um, and I guess there'd be horse and buggies in the full deal there then, eh? Do you do you no stick out and, a bit? No, I don't think there's horse and buggies. Oh, really? I don't know. We stopped getting invited, so we don't go in. Mm. Not that we were invited. Was it the kids' fault? Or I think it, it was just that we all sat at the same table and we could do that at home. So we stopped mm-hmm. going. Well, they do but... do some clever things. Uh, do you, you ever seen them cut open a bag of chips straight down the middle there yeah. and like open it up like a basket? That's pretty neat. But there there was no uh, no horse and buggies. Really? Mm-mm. Out of 100 first cousins, nobody's in a horse and buggy. No. Hmm. I disagree. Well, oh, it's 100% horse and buggies, but not at these <laughs> reunions. There's there's uh, a family tree, you know. Right. Yeah. Right. The whole tree. Yeah. Um, but like Scoot, my brother-in-law was my best friend growing up and um, his family's a bunch of beauties. And now Rytec even has a cottage down here too, eh? Mm-hmm. They say work ethic's a thing. And these uh, Mennonites can work harder than the rest of the world, you know? I, I do agree with that. That work ethic's a thing, mm-hmm. folks, and the people that go out and do stuff, do stuff, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. They give her. And uh, anyways, yeah, it's nice to have a bunch of Elmira folks coming up here and you get to see. The best it. part was when Rytek bought his cottage. Why? We just invited them up for the weekend. <laughs> and then he bought a cottage? <laughs> yeah, we went on a short ride and bought a cottage. <laughs> I'm not joking. Uh, I actually went on a golf cart ride and came back. Well, when you it. see something right, you just got to do it, right? We, You know, Marlene Gibson was the sales rep at the time. And uh, she had us into her house. They signed the papers. And this was all on a golf cart ride. And we One golf that. cart ride. And then yeah. he had they came back with a cottage. And we invited them to stop for the weekend because they hadn't been there yet. But well, it is a nice place in the world, isn't it? It's kind of like how we ended up moving here was we just went for a drive to see where we might live if we ever and if we ever decided to actually make this move and then that house was for sale. Yeah. And then that home. It was uh it was a good golf cart ride. Yeah. Now they're here and the bridge is open and we're all good. And the yeah, the you get to see family in in fun settings when you're yeah. not around work and stuff, right? They pop in on the sea dew in the middle they of the do. afternoon and They sure do. Yeah. Yeah. Cousins meeting cousins. So, I do recall this was back, hey, stop looking at my notes. You're not supposed to be here. Um, that when I was uh, an aspiring hockey player, I think I was at Western Michigan, you went to Australia. So I've interviewed some guys that went to Australia. They all like kangaroo. Did you eat kangaroo in Australia? Well, you know, I don't know that I did and not by willing. I didn't willingly eat kangaroo, but I was told that if I had had chicken in Australia, it was probably kangaroo. Well, because they all have told me they ate kangaroo like burgers, which it really kind of freaks me out. I, because I, when I look at a kangaroo, they seem quite... No, they told me that I probably ate kangaroo and thought it was chicken. Mm. But you know, you're driving down the road and you see all these kangaroos hopping and they're pretty cool. They look cool and that's why I don't really want to yeah. eat them. But I understand that there there's so many of them there that they do eat them. And it's like chickens, I guess. Uh, I don't know. I don't like. Really I don't funny. like it. I wouldn't have ate it knowingly i guess that's the word um did we haven't talked you also came to uh so you went to Landsuit, denmark and waster michigan is that were those the trips you didn't did you come you came to beatingheim with uncle scoot i went to beatingheim maybe twice that was when he was now your friend I went to not Beating, my I, friend i went to beatingheim with dad and you came and with scoot with... because i remember we went it was new year's eve do you so you were from Canada, and you've never seen the fireworks that go off at midnight in Germany, eh? It's crazy. It's actually similar to Panama. Panama does Very, that. the same thing. Really? Yeah. Up from the mountain, you can see And you see can it. see it. Yeah. And yeah, so folks, this is how we know about that is Papa and Nana have the place in Panama, right? Yeah. And same idea. The, the fireworks are similar. We don't well, I remember... I just remember that night because I there was I won't name names, but some I had a nice balcony in Beatingheim that overlooked the whole town or city or whatever, and um, well a fella fell like out of the window, but then just out onto the patio. He didn't like fall mm. too far, right? But he did fall out of the window, right? 
Right. Fun yes. times, but it was a good trip, right? We had a lot of fun. And the other thing we've done together is went to Amsterdam when I hurt my knee. <laughs> That would have been the same trip, probably. And that was a trip to uh, watch you play hockey, but were you playing or were you No, on that vacation? was when I had my you were on vacation. I had my knee surgery. I was done for the year. So no, no I think you're on vacation. No. Amsterdam, really? I was in on it was in my that remember how I don't fat remember. I got in the boat. <laughs> yeah, I, sure. I wasn't playing hockey then. I was hundred percent after my knee surgery. You know, you don't want to do mushrooms in Amsterdam. <laughs> Something. No, you can't do that, folks. It's uh, Not yeah. You. you shouldn't go there. <laughs> it's well, dangerous. Yeah, <laughs> it's very dangerous. You wouldn't do it anymore no. ever again. Ever again? No, tiring yeah. stuff, right? Of extremely, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, what else do I got? Um, well, when um, what? what are you I don't know. What were you gonna say? Well, I was thinking of Australia when I was yeah. So um, going to why did you do go there? the no when I did the um, skydiving and the bungee jumping. Can't right, do, that's can't, what I have that written down. So you're looking at my notes again. I got written down. I actually didn't look at your notes, but yeah, you did I, bungee jumping. That's cool. Oh, I did it three times, and then I three times. Can't, yeah. Why? One don't once you do it once, you're like okay, I've done it. Well, they were all different. All three bungee jumps were different bungee jumps? I guess so. Well, one was in a canyon in the middle of... That was the big one, right? That was some pretty wild it's, stuff. It was here. 440 feet high, and it was the second biggest one in the world. So, yeah, I did do that. That, uh, and, not many um, people seem to want to do that, do they? Or, like, I, I well, don't... they should, because it's awesome. I, really? I, don't, I would do it again. I don't really think i'm a bungee jumper so, but i'm not a pole vaulter either <laughs> so scott told me that for um my birthday this year i'm 42 and um apparently he didn't want to buy me a present so he said i will you can go bungee jumping or no not bungee jumping skydiving he's like you can go skydiving i'm like i'm sorry what i can go skydiving it's... he's gonna buy me skydiving but i gotta find someone to go with me so really he got me nothing <laughs> i didn't go right so but. if you went skydiving he'd cover it right in a, <laughs> your present scott thank you <laughs> went nowhere yeah you're welcome um, <laughs> so andrew lackner his wife volunteered him to come with me so he's a shed guy and right he is a shed guy I and think, andrew uh, i've been he you know what he is tough because i went to that canada's wonderland back when we were kids and we went up that thing that's did really that? high. Oh, I, did. I did it with him. And I think Papa was with us. And I remember him cracking a joke because I was so nervous. That's He seems I like a guy that. that would skydive. She said he wants to go for sure. He'll go with you. So that's in, that's up in the air. Right. And that's that, something you go. want to do. You want to go skydiving. Well, when you've I, already done it? I don't want to knock at a birthday present. <laughs> So I'm going to do it. You got to get yours, right? Yeah, I'm doing that. <laughs> Competing is fun. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm winning, I'm winning. <laughs> Have you sky dove, dove Twice. Twice. And bungee jumped three times. Yeah. Why? Because it's awesome. And when I did it the first time, I was in Australia over the Great Barrier Reef. The second time in Dunsville, Ontario... Dunsville. over a farmer's field not very cool no. hmm. not after you did it over the great barrier reef that's pretty interesting probably eh? won't do that again australia is pretty neat though i wish i would have got there hey eh? well you still can so of all the places that you came to visit me playing hockey kalamazoo germany denmark i guess elmira what's your what was your favorite trip I think that always Kalamazoo will win. Yeah. Yeah. They, and they should. Yeah. You know, it was pretty fun. Um, Kalamazoo is literally like Western Michigan was like the most fun place in the world. And it's hard to explain it to people that have never been there that like it's. Fun. That's why like we were at people's wedding. Like I was your sister and I was at all their weddings and. Oh, well, we were uh, we were a hockey family, right? Hockey family. Mom and dad thing. were just at Daryl's 
or sister's wedding. Like yeah. That was so yeah, and that, and it's a hockey family. And then yeah, um, when we would have parties after the games, and all of our parents would come to the parties with us and enjoy college life too, and our siblings. Um, and you got to know everybody, and everybody came from different parts of the world. But you're together for four years. It it is exciting. It, it times. Was, it's like a, it was like a family. It was like a family. Yeah. I just wish we would have won more. We weren't very good at winning hockey games. We were I don't good. remember the hockey games. Nobody does. I remember the parties. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it, if we would have won the hockey games, we'd probably remember them, right? Yeah. yeah. I remember. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Well, other thing we haven't talked about and how we started. Well, we would have Elmira folks to concord and for this too was the aqueducts. We were mm. both Elmira aqueducts. We were on the swim team, right? Oh yeah. And I would love my kids to be on the swim team, but they right now don't want to do it. And competing is fun and trying to win a swimming race is actually really fun. And you practice all year for that final meet, they call it. And then like you've worked all year to try and beat the people you couldn't beat, right? It is pretty exciting. Oh, super exciting. And they shoot a gun, right? To start a race. Like that's exciting too. Oh, it was the best. It was. I yeah. Speedos weren't for me though. You know, I had to You get, wore it though. I, I rocked, rocked it. it. I rocked it. Um, and you, you know, and then uh I started getting hair growth um and whatnot. <laughs> and I had to give up the sport. Not that I didn't like it, right? I just sometimes Okay. So you gave up the sport because of hair growth? Well the, sometimes well it was I'm like sorry. right around the same time when like you're thinking girls look attractive and it's like geez i can't get out of the pool right <laughs> really is that why you quit um well no i just didn't think i needed to be rocking a speedo anymore <laughs> uh-huh. there's, there's a point i think i've seen them at the when we we're at hockey because we don't i think i gave age. it up around when you gave it up and we were both around the same age that it was just time. i was 18 really you kept old. going oh you so you stopped at 16 i think i was 13 but they um i see them in the uh the arena but they wear shorts now, not speedos. So they were tight, really tight shorts. Well, then maybe I could have got into this. Yeah, I think it would have changed your uh, swimming career. Um, it is fun though. Like, and then we would have the f- final meet or a meet would be in Concord, and we'd have the whole Elmira Aqueducts back to this cottage, and everybody would run oh, yeah. a muck and have hot dogs and hamburgers, right? And that's like, that's bringing a team together. I know where I get it from, right? Jeans are a thing. hundred people. <laughs> yeah. And that's why I manage and Scott coaches and it's, it is a team thing and you enjoy it. Hockey's supposed to be a family. You're supposed to make it really good for the kids. That's all. That you should try is. and do epic shit, right? Yeah. The goal is to make it the best you can for the kids because that's what it's all about. And uh, you are a manager for next season and Uncle Scoot is coaching again? Mm-hmm. Yes. Manager, coach, again. I got suckered into being the manager from Leslie Bauman, which is interesting, but when they were four. And now I still do it. Now they're eight, nine, going on nine. Do you know what? It's actually not the worst thing to be the manager because then somehow last season, when I was the coach, manager, general manager, everything, you know, I um somehow the boys games and the girls games just didn't really overlap that much. I don't know how that happened, but I might have made the schedule. I wouldn't say that I'm a control person, but I do like being in control and get you know, three kids. Yeah, right. And I understand. But I, right people now I'm booking stuff, not knowing what the other teams are doing. So I don't know. So I'm not totally in control. But. Right. And then it's nice to know what they're doing. So then you can bob yeah. and weave around it right yeah it's hard to have three kids and organize sports when there's two of you um so the only other really thing i have written down here is frog catching um you so we do try to be the best we can be at we're competitive you have always thought you were the best frog catcher in the world you think you're better than me at frog catching don't you I don't know why I feel like our kids might be better right now. They're, They're just, pretty quick. They have a bin out back right now full of frogs and tadpoles. Yeah. So they might be beating us. And Tiny Timmy, right? The little tiny But frog. I was definitely better than you. Is that right? I would think so. You were willing to go 
further and deeper into places to find them right mm -hmm. i i was a bit soft that way i wasn't good enough that way i wouldn't dig down deep as you could say right mm -hmm. yeah and crazy. i think i had all the tools i had all the tools i just couldn't um mm -hmm. i couldn't i couldn't get to the same areas of the, the what do you call it a swamp a river what yeah. is it the frog pond frog pond. It's right. frog pond it's the frog pond yeah you'd go to places i wouldn't go May makes me sad yeah and I feel like now they do that all the time and it's the crayfish hunting, right? They're raking the seaweed out. Mm -hmm. So we do this now at Lurgan, Lurgan I, Beach. You have seaweed there that you can do that? We that rake thing? it out. And when we were at Chesley Lake last year, the year before, I went in and I raked it all out, raked out the seaweed so they could look for the for crayfish. Stuff, for fun stuff. For fun stuff. Um, we used to do that as children fish. at Lake Roslyn, right? Mm -hmm. In Hanover, Ontario. Yes. We would, Nana would rake out the seaweed for us to look through for gems of different stuff, right? <laughs> yes, and now I do that for my children. You sure do. And cousins. Um, and um, we also used to do a lot of turtle catching. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Lots of turtle catching. Yeah. Yeah. Um, tough sport but you know when you get into it well but you want to you we were winning well we, we would catch them and i remember how exciting it would be when you come up in a little dinghy right and there's a turtle sitting on a log in the sunshine and they see you and you see them and then it's game on right yeah. then they hit the water and then exciting stuff wasn't it very i still try to do that with the kids I haven't Very gone exciting. turtle catching in a while, not since Panama. <laughs> you didn't catch turtles in Panama. Oh yeah, lots. Hot, like like in a net. Yeah, when that not yeah. with your hands. No, I didn't touch okay. those ones. Yeah, I tried not yeah. to. <laughs> no. Okay, good. <laughs> I was gonna move away. Um, but yeah, no, I I don't know what else I have. Do you have any questions for me? How was your first trip to the? Well, this isn't the shed, but the podcast well you were very nervous how are you doing now you no know, i was extremely nervous and this has been an ongoing thing for years you trying to get me here mm. so here i am um it's about better. time you put your big girl pants on right well i usually <laughs> put my big girl pants on typically but huh, not with the podcast right so but it's fun isn't it and fun this, is fun this was really fun. i think it's i fun. like having fun so. and uh yeah I don't know. I don't have anything else, but um, it, it's going to be a fun week and I'll probably beat you at There's the probably cooking. Lots rate. more we could have talked about when I'm looking at your notes. Why? What else do so I you got? Let me look at your notes ahead of time. Well, Poppy used to it. make us a rink. I got that written down. Um, and now I tried to do that for mm -hmm. Colby until my yard was too uneven that it sucked and it was too small. Yeah. Well, we had a really big rink in COVID. I forget. Yes, the, you did. I, I have forget that the down. dimensions, but it was. It was big. huge. You had an awesome rink, and it, we had full blown families out there with full games. Oh, Jesus! Brought back a memory <laughs> when Uncle Scoot, who didn't decide to play hockey till he was or get to play hockey till he was sixteen or seventeen, decided he thought he could beat me one on one hockey nowadays, and um, I tell you. It was just like playing pond hockey with Mennonites back in high school. My shins were covered in bruises after. That guy has no control of his stick work. None. Mm, Hammered right. me in the shins. Well, that's why he didn't play with nice hockey, I guess, right? Well, he he was giving her out there. Oh, yeah. We, I, we actually just so you know, Scott, I won. <laughs> we had nights where we played one-on-one, -on -one, just the two of us. Really? Yeah. You guys were just mucking it up competing. The two of two. us had a ring at game one night. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Who won? I, I I don't think that matters, but I think I won. Well, you mm -hmm. think or you know? Did you beat I, him? I know. Yeah, I beat him. Yeah. <laughs> Sucker, you lost to both of us. If I didn't win, I'm not going to admit it now. <laughs> um. But yeah, the other thing I got written down, or like, there's other random things I got written down. Oh, Bruce Beach Golf Course. Yeah, yeah Bruce Beach Golf Course. It, so I posted this on Insta, my honey hole there the other day. I went to go pick up eggs by your cottage that's just down the road. 
Um, and uh, there's just a box and it says it's 350 for the eggs and it's just the honor system. You can go in there and not pay if you're dingling, but everybody goes in and pays and you just pick up your eggs and you head out of there, you put your money in the box. And while the Bruce Beach Golf Course is not very different, mm -hmm. it is just a box that you put your money in and it says on a board what the price is, how much you should pay. And you either pay and you're a good person or you don't. But like the honor system and the way the world should work is like when you see things like that going around, it's like this is a good place to be, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So you can just play golf because the kids want to play golf and then it's a good way to play it. And you can bring your dog. They can just run around. I still remember way back in the day, we had friends up oh. and we went golfing. I totally We have coolers. We had dogs. And we played golf with coolers on wheels, about three dogs, and just did it. And it was awesome. And you can just go out there and run amok and enjoy the sport. And then mm -hmm. it's weird when you get, when you've grown up with golf that way. And then you get to a course where they're like, well, you can't do this because of that. You can't do this because of that. You can't do this. And it's like, huh, well, I'd rather go play Bruce Beach. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're going to do that this week. We need to. Yeah. Um, It's probably the, well, we shouldn't let out any more secrets on here. Because then, you know, there might be other golfers. Might get too busy. Right. Because usually we're the only people there. <laughs> yeah. I do need to check with uh, Joe because he sent his, he went with his kids after Scott's party. Big Joe, the big party. Oh, Joe Dowler. Joe Dowler. Yeah, they went. And, they went and played Bruce Beach after. And it's party. fun out there, folks. Yeah. That is the way golf should be. Is you can just mm -hmm. do whatever you gosh darn want, right? Do you have anything golf. else from my notes that you want to talk Island about? Helmet. There's, so we talk about that. I think we talked about everything, yeah, I folks. Think we're good. I think it's almost and time to uh, hit the tubes with the kids, right? Yeah, I go scoots on it now, but. I, so Aunt Dana here was the biggest tubing enthusiast in the world. I haven't seen her on a tube in years. Wondering if she's going to get on. Well, I, I I just tubed to Brian Clemmer and Caitlin Clemmer's cottage the other weekend. She, and also Shed folk. Also tubed to Lee and Connie's cottage last weekend. So I've tubed a lot, but Papa almost broke my neck when I was a child. So now I'm on a different type of tube, right? Um. Like he was, pretty much broke my neck. Is that right? I don't. Yeah. I don't recall that. About twenty feet in the air. Mm, well, yeah, pretty much didn't come out of it. So I never tubed again until now. But now I'm good. Sometimes things can get carried away when you push the envelope, right? Yeah. But yeah. Um. Well. Um. Thanks for finally coming on, and uh, it's always fun for me. I enjoy uh making memories, and this yeah. has been another memory, right? Thanks for having me. And this has been another episode of Two Ales and Hockey Tales with Dana Kay and Wally. <laughs> <laughs>